Hey, what is up builders and makers? I am so excited to bring you this video today because over the past two months, I've been working on this book and I've made 50 paintings in two months. Also say hello, boo. Fine, don't say hi. But yeah, that's one of the things that I've been working on. I, I've had a few projects in the hopper, but this is the way I finally finished. I, I did a thing and I finally finished it. Like I've never been able to do the, the Inktober challenges or what have you. I've always fallen off the wagon for this. I originally intended to do all of these in one month. So I started in early December and I was like, oh, I'm going to finish all these by the end of the year. So less than a month. I, I was going to try and finish them all in three weeks, but real life happens. You know, I was still dealing with a lot of stuff with my cat, like making sure we were getting him healthy. I was staying late at work a lot. End of year is kind of big when you work in accounting. So I was staying late at work a lot and you know, Christmas happened. I had time off at Christmas, but I had to use it to do festive things because it was Christmas. So I said, you know what? Look, I'm going to give myself a little bit more time to do all these. And it's now the 12th of February, 2021. And I'm finally finished. So I started in early December. It's been a little over two months, I guess, since I started all these. But they're done. Not all of them are great, but you know what? 50 paintings is better than zero paintings. So I'm going to go for it. So this book is called The Watercolor's Guide to Painting Skies, and it is older than me. It was published in 1984. It's a vintage book. The paintings, I know, you're helping. You're helping. Oh, dude. Paintings were done by Ferdinand Petri, and the photographs that the paintings are based on were done by John Shaw. And... One of the limitations from this book I noticed is that because it was published when it was, there are a lot of paints that are like mentioned in the book that aren't really mentioned like when you get the starter kit. You know, obviously yellow ochre, ultramarine, yeah, but cerulean came up a lot and I don't see that recommended in a basic starter kit and I understand that this is because of how paint manufacturing trend is influenced by auto manufacturing and appliance manufacturing trends. So we're going to get the colors that we're most commonly going to get in this, the year of our Lord 2021, are going to be basically the colors that you would be able to get on a car. And, or that you would get on, um... And no one's got like a Harvest Gold refrigerator anymore, but that's why you don't get quinacridone. So that was one of the limitations. The other was this was meant for like intermediate painters, and I'm really a beginner. I'm not going to lie, but yeah. So I did the best I could, and let's get into it. So, yeah, the first I did, Stormy Colors at Dawn. Some of these I like, some of them not so much. Like, I was really happy that the first one, like, right off the bat, came out okay. And the second, Learning to Work with Reflected Light. I also really liked this one. I thought that turned out well, so I got too confident. You know, too confident. Hazy atmospheric effects. I don't think this turned out as well, but I think it was fun to do. I did like working with masking fluid. Sharp contrast between light and dark. I also really like how that one turned out. Um, 
especially like the little points of light. To me, those remind me of ghosts. I know everything is ghosts. Everything. Um, do, 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 do. Monochromatic sky. I feel like that could have done better, but I was honestly trying to rush through these so I could get them all done. And I'm chiseling painting time into like regular everyday lifetime. So I feel like there's a couple of these that I want to do over. Maybe I want to come back to this like in a year, maybe two years, and see if I can do them over and have them look good. And some of these, like this one, I don't like how the sky turned out, but I like how the ground turned out. And we're supposed to be focusing on the sky. This, let's just pretend that never happened. Same with this one. That is a no for me. This one I liked, but I didn't like how the clouds turned out. The tree, I thought the tree was good. I thought the grass was good. But the clouds, not so much. The rays of light, that's something I want to practice at. The way they were doing it in the book was to use an eraser to pull up some of the paint after it had dried. And I did that, but I also cheated and used a little bit of white gouache. Not a lot. Just a little bit for the rays, and I think I should not have done that. I think I should have just left it with the eraser bits. Strong silhouette. I think that's supposed to be a deer. I don't know what kind of animal. But again, I like how the grass turned out. But at least I've got that. Wet and, I really do like how this one turned out. With the wet and wet. I mean, you can barely see it. But that's fine. And then the, the foreground, not so much. Like, fine detail work I do struggle with. Dramatic cloud formation. I did because I don't have all the same colors that are, like, mentioned as being in the kit. Um, I did use a bit of my own and did a bit of creative license, and I kind of like how the turquoise came out. This one, I think this is one of my favorites out of the whole book. Um, yeah. I think that both the sky and the background turned out, and mine's a bit grayer. I think he used more blues in his painting, and I was just like, you know what, I've got my paints gray. I love my paints gray. I'm gonna have to top that one up. Yeah, <laughs> no. Could have done better. So that I'd practice at. This I'm kind of so-so about. I like it, but I don't know. I, I kind of do like how that cloud turned out, but I think that the foreground wasn't so great. This one I also really like, especially with the little trees on the hill. And... I don't know. I, I think my paint application was kind of chunky on this one. Chunky's not... That's a bad way to describe paint application, but that's the best way that I can. This! Yes! Yes! Oh my god. That's another one that I, I was really into, especially everything about it, but especially this little, like, village, or maybe it's a farm. I'm not sure if it's a village or a farm, like, at the bottom right corner just those tiny buildings, but uh, everything else too. Ooh, that, yeah. That, that was a winner. This one, not so much. And again, I wasn't really happy with how the sky turned out, but I was happy with how the rocks turned out, at least the ones at the top, the top mountains, not the, the rock, the foreground rocks.
This one was okay. There were a lot of techniques in here like wet and wet I wasn't really comfortable with. I'm still not comfortable with wet and wet. And there were other techniques like pulling stuff off the eraser that was new to me. Um, tinting the paper beforehand was also a new one to me and you'll see a bit of that in a second. That, I think if I had done the sky a little bit darker that would have looked better but I like how the clouds turned out in that one even if the, the, the dark grays are too dark. They're too friggin' dark, but that's fine. This one was all right. I like how the little red sliver of reflected light at the bottom right turned out. And I did use white gouache again at the top. This one I was okay with. The background mountains I think turned out really good. And the trees are okay. This, ooh, I like how that one was. Um, I decided, and this was my creative license with the foreground, to do it dark at the top and then just kind of blend it out. And the little sliver of sun at the bottom, I think that was good, but I do like how this banding was at the top. It's more reflected light. I do not like how this turned out. I don't like how the moon turned out. I don't like how any of it turned out, so it's, it's, Forget it ever happened. Painting around clouds, that. Right, my camera cut out, so I'm not sure where I left off. Um, that's one I think I can forget ever happened. I don't like how any of this turned out, especially the moon. Uh, no, no, no. This one. There was an underpainting, and that's kind of a new technique for me. You can see it in the step-by-step -step photo here, like, there's like a little bit of red and a little hint of blue, and I thought that was real neat. I think I could have done better. Sketching is another thing that I need to work on, but I liked working with an underpainting. I think that helped to tie everything together. No. No. This. This was another one of my favorites. And it's like, it's so faint. It's like barely there, but sometimes that's all you need. And that's a total winter at, at the dunes. You know, I can just imagine going to Indiana Dunes and having it be like that. This one I thought I wouldn't like because I was like, oh, barn paintings and it's going to be hard to paint a building. It turns out it's actually easy to paint a building. But in the end, I think it turned out okay. I think I was just apprehensive because of the barn. And this one, which was just a stark... Just a couple trees. I think that turned out all right. And that could have been better. I don't know why this reminds me of something out of a Bible story, but it does. this I was really happy with how the the mountains turned out so it's like they're supposed to be misty and you can kind of see that just a little just a little little and this I was like yes yes yeah because you get the fog again and Not so much, 
but it's fine. I can recognize things and say, hey, I need to work on this and that's something. This also used an underpainting. And I think that does, it, it really does help to tie things together. That's a technique that I'm going to continue using. And this as well, I'm not into that. But it's fine. I did like this and I like doing it. It reminds me of when I was younger, when I was in college and I did dog walking and I would take the dogs to the forest preserve to just let them run around and you know they just run through the snow and this reminds me of the forest preserves that are by my house that I feel like we're super blessed to have. Um, just that that's the area that I think of. And this is another beach in winter scene. Do you guys like going to the beach in winter? I love going to the beach in winter. And this is actually Lake Michigan, so hey. I don't know if it's my side of Lake Michigan, but... I was really happy with how the red turned out, but I think it kind of smashed into the mountains. It, the delineation between the mountains and the sky is not as clear as I'd like it to be because they just blend together. It's clear, but it's not in the way that it should be. This one I wasn't so crazy about. Um, yeah, I struggled painting the church part of it. I think that's supposed to be a church. I, I don't know. I, I've never actually seen a church in real life. <laughs> that's a lie. Um, the windmill. I don't know. I, I like how the little buildings behind the windmill turned out, but not the windmill itself. But I want to learn how to draw more complex structures like that so that was good practice so moon let's see and again this reminds me of the forest preserves because there'll be like a big swath of like open grove and then in the background you'll get these trees This one I was sort of okay with. I did like the dark foreground. This one, I don't know. And I, I think I could have done better, but I did like how the background actually turned out. And that was the point. It was supposed to be the sky that was turning out like that. This one as well but I think my clouds turned out kind of funny. And this was another one that utilized an underpainting. So, or actually this was the one where you had to tint the paper. And so you can kind of see the very light yellow poking through at the edges. And that's more that I want to try. That was fun and that was exciting. And then I used a lot of wet on wet with the, the bands of color. I think I would have gone darker in the foreground though. And this one, I don't know, that fell short. Maybe I was having a bad day. I'm always having a bad day. This one turned out alright. I do like how the the break in the, not the break in the sky, but letting a little bit of white paper show through. And I like how the trees turned out in this one. They're not exactly the same as his trees, but they're my trees. And then this, I thought this was the last one. It's not. I could have done a better job with the flowers. 
But this, we were meant to use gouache and I've got colored gouache. I've got like the Arteza big box of gouache and I didn't feel like digging that out for this. So I used my tube of like white Windsor Newton gouache that I just buy the biggest tube they'll sell me and I tinted that with colors. So I thought that was the last one, but it turns out at the beginning of the book, there are two that are actually exercises. I did those this morning and that is supposed to be this and it isn't. So that's another like dappling and fine detail I want to work more on. And then this, I think the clouds turned out okay, but I probably would have done more of a peek on the front cloud. So yeah, that's it. That, that is 50 paintings in two months. Don't try this at home. So that's what they all look like. And that's what these ones all look like. And I guess laying them all out now, you can see that there were actually 52. So those extra exercises at the beginning of were extra ones. So, yeah. Boo. And again, that's the book. I got really lucky because my mother also paints and she's been painting since forever and ever and so she had this book in her stash and she was going to give it away and I pulled it out of the the bucket of stuff that she was going to give to Goodwill and I was just like no this mine and so I got really lucky and found it. Um, I'm not sure how you would be able to find such an old book in this day and age. Um, I know used bookstores are fantastic, but yeah, so Watercolor's Guide to Painting Skies, and this was published by Watson Guptill Publications. And there's got to be the ISBN number, if you're really curious, is 0-8230-56910. So uh, that, that's probably the easiest way to find this specific book, but good luck if you wish to go through all this exercise. Um, may the odds be ever in your favor. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. I was so excited to be able to share this with you guys. And if you've stuck it through for all of it, again, thank you. All right, so here's one more look at Boo. Since, since he's here. Boo, say hi. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Bye.